I was really excited when I came home because I was going to make a big dinner for my wife. I went out, I got a couple dozen roses. I was all excited about the night, and I had the roses. She, she usually would come in through the garage, and she'd open up the garage door, and boom, there were the roses right there. So what did I want to get, guys? I wanted to get the, ah, what a great husband I have, right? That's what I was looking for. Here's the problem. She didn't read my script. This was my movie in my head. How many people have not read your script? Well, she walked in the house, and she was on the phone with my sister-in-law. And she's on the phone, and she's talking, and she walks right by the flowers. And she's talking, and she goes in the bedroom. And she's talking, and all of a sudden, she turns around, she sees the flowers, and she goes, I got to get off the phone. <laughs> she killed it. She killed it right there. Now, got these flowers, I cooked this dinner, I was all ready, a little romance. Done. Why? Because she didn't read my script. See, some of you have got to start communicating your script to the people that you work with. How many of you have ever said it's going to be one of those days? Raise your hands. Anybody ever say that? Okay. And mom and grandma. How many have the mom and grandmas that say bad things happen in threes? Anybody have those mom and grandmas? Me too. And you wake up, and what happens? All of a sudden, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all these bad things start happening to you. And you know what you'd say at the end of the day? See, I was right. I knew it was going to be one of those days, and I was right. Here's my question. What did you ever get for being right? If you've got something for being right, I need to know. See, because I've been right a lot, I haven't gotten anything. So if you've got something, I want to get the same stuff. So let me know about that. Now, if you don't believe this concept, if you're in a rush to leave today, how many red lights you hitting? Every single one. Or... How about this one? How many of you bought a new car in the past or just recently? Anybody buy a new car just recently? Guarantee this happened. The moment you got in that new car, started to drive it around, it seemed like every single person in your town was driving the same car, right? There were hundreds of them on the road. See, because your brain was going on search to make you right. Say, hey, that guy or gal's one smart cookie. Great minds think alike. They got the same car as I did. See, because your attitude is shaped by your beliefs. It's internal. See, if you believe that you're going to be able to double and triple your business, you're going to. And if you don't believe you can, you're going to be right too. Well, I was driving up through Maine, and some of you may have been in Maine before, and Maine is a beautiful scenic drive. Picture driving up 95, and the snow has just melted. There's a little bit out there, but the trees are blooming. It's beautiful. It's mountainous terrain, and you're close to the Canadian border. Well, I drove up to Maine, and I got off at 95 in a town called Presque Isle, Maine. Has anybody ever been to Presque Isle, Maine, or heard of Presque Isle, Maine? Few of you have. Well, Presque Isle, Maine is about five seconds from the Canadian border. It is way up there. See, when I get to Maine, I'm thinking lobster. How many of you are thinking lobster when you get to Maine? See, I'm thinking lobster when I get up there, but I don't know where to go. Well, I get off of the highway, at Presque Isle, Maine, off of 95, and there's one of those little tourism booths. You've all seen those before. You know, when you enter a new state, it says, welcome to Maine or welcome to Florida, and they've got a little tourism booth there with, with the candy machines and everything, but they also have every map, every restaurant, everything that you could ever imagine in that place. Well, I walked in, and there were these two elderly ladies, and they were walking around. I said, listen, could you help me? I'm looking for some places that I can get some lobster. I'm looking for some maps and some restaurants. Well, these women couldn't serve me any better. They went and they grabbed me maps, and they grabbed me all kinds of restaurants, and they were ready to make reservations for me. It was incredible. I had this feeling of love and appreciation from them, and you know what? If you give to get your even, if you give expecting nothing in return, you're going to be ahead of the game. Well, I'm the type of guy that I'm just a huggy, touchy, kissy guy. I don't know. That's just who I am. Well, I looked at this woman. She couldn't have been a day under 75 years old. And I said, get over here and give me a hug. <laughs> and I gave her this big hug. And when I let her go, she looked at me and she said, I really needed that. I was married for 52 years and my husband passed away a month ago. You don't know how important that was for me. You never know when giving that appreciation to someone else is going to have a major difference in their lives. 
And you know what? You got to go from the gut. If you can't, then you must. And if you must, then you will. See, you want to affirm to yourself every day what you want to have happen. Because we already discovered if we say it's going to be one of those days, we're going to be right. And it's going to be one of those days. So I had everybody stand up with me. And I'd like you to stand up with me right now. And we did an affirmation. See, because you're going to come up against things that you're not going to think you can overcome. And when you do, you need to say to yourself, I can, I must, I will. So repeat after me. I can, I, can. I, must. I must, I will. I will. Is that the best you can do? Let's try this again. I can. I, can. I, must. I must. I will. I will. You're almost there. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. I can. I, can. I, must. I must. I will. I will. All right, I know you can. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> well, I was down in my office in Kendall. And I got to meet the Ock Inspector, a former colonel in the Guatemalan Army. <laughs> True. Well, he sat across the desk from me, and I'm a bit of a schmoozer. I like to talk to people. So I started to attempt the schmooze. If you don't know what the schmooze is, I was just being as nice. Can I get your coffee? Can I Simonize your car? What would you like? What do you need? Let me go grab some patient files for you. I've already selected the perfect files. <laughs> they don't want those files, though, do they? They want to go in your drawer and take out the files that they want to take out. Well, I sat there, and then one of our doctors came in. And one of our doctors, he's a board-certified Johns Hopkins, Cornell Medical School, Mount Sinai. He's got all the credentials, double board internal medicine and neurology, and he could schmooze anybody, not our Guatemalan security colonel. He just sat there completely stone-faced. I had this weird feeling that I might fail my first inspection. Now, how do I share this information with my partners? This is my baby. I'm supposed to get us passed, certified. I'm the guy who had to go out and get, you know, the maps that you have to have in your office so we can escape in case of a nuclear disaster. You know, Aka wants to know where are the record's going to be. If you've got a nuclear disaster, how do we get out of here? Well, I'm starting to get the beads of sweat on my forehead. You ever feel that way? Oh, my God, I better start looking for another job. <laughs> well, he looked across the table at me, and he started shaking his head. And I said, you know something? I said, I run my facilities like you would run the Guatemalan Army. I said, see, I've done personality profiling for Air Force Intelligence at wright Patterson Air Force Base. They bring me in every year to sit in front of people, ask them questions, and, let, and me to see if they're telling the truth or not. I've done this for years. As soon as I said that to him, a smile came across his face. Oh, you work with the Air Force? Yes, I do. Actually, I work with the Air Force and the Army and the Navy. I've spoken around the country on different bases. Well. If that's the case, let me take a look at some. Your records look very good to me. See, I had to bond with him. I found out something about people. I found out that people do business with people who they like who are like them. See, I have this philosophy. If you don't ASK, you're not going to GET. What is the worst thing that can happen? Someone says no. Well, how about in building your businesses? See, I know there's been times when you might have asked for a referral or you've gone in to develop a new piece of business and you said, you know, I don't think they're going to go for it. I, I, you know, we've got competitors out there. Why should they pick us? And you asked and they said, sure. And you almost fell off your chair. See, I always say, if you don't ask, what's the difference? You're in the same spot you were 30, 30 seconds before. If they say yes, you've just gone to the next level.